So last weekend was pretty uneventful, right? I mean, I can't really think of anything that happened. Oh, there was some big news, a vaccine. And people were going a bit bananas online, so I was warming up my fingers, ready to tweet my usual anti-hype, cold water pouring, Debbie Downer, let's not go crazy guys message. But when I started to read about it, I actually felt a bit more optimistic. So here's a very quick rundown of the basics. And it can be quick because so far all we have is a press release. And that's an important point to stress. We need to wait for the full results, but we can say a few things. Remember the big news about dexamethasone? That was also broken without the full paper being released. However, there was much more information in, in that press release, and the whole protocol had already been published, which we don't have here. But nevertheless, uh, here's what we have so far. BioNTech is a German company that developed the vaccine and partnered with uh, every aging man's favorite drug company, Pfizer. And these are the preliminary results from a phase three study, the final stage of drug or vaccine development, based on 44,000 people who've been recruited. It's a randomized controlled trial, so half of those people got a placebo and half got the real vaccine. And uh, of course, none of them will know which one they got. Overall, uh, 94 people so far have got proven COVID-19, which is one of the pre specified landmarks. Uh, we don't know how many of those got the real vaccine, but if they're saying it's 90% effective, then a maximum of nine people out of that 94 can have received the real vaccine. The remaining 85 must have got the placebo for them to make that claim. And that's really impressive um, and well above the efficacy required for approval. Uh, funnily enough, Pfizer actually said that they reached this number of cases earlier than expected due to the sharply rising infection rates in places like the US. So I guess every airborne COVID droplet cloud does indeed have a silver lining. Final approval will be sought when 164 participants have been infected. Again, I assume that's from a power calculation. No safety concerns have so far been raised. The vaccine requires two doses, um, about three or four weeks apart. It's a messenger RNA vaccine, which would make it the first mRNA uh, vaccine to be approved in humans. And uh, messenger RNA is the way that a little bit of code is taken from the DNA source file to the 3D printer that is your ribosomes. Um, and so what the vaccine does is use the spike protein code from coronavirus virus uh, to synthesize more copies, which your body can then use to make antibodies and train T cells to attack cells that are producing the virus. And if you do then get infected, your body already has defenses against uh, SARS-CoV-2. And it's a good platform to build upon if the virus mutates significantly because it could be adjusted reasonably easily, in theory. I always try to state on this channel that the, the world isn't black and white, so people who claim Big Pharma is uniformly evil can surely acknowledge that reality isn't that binary. And it's interesting that Pfizer have been quite vocal that they received no help from the US government after Mike Pence tried to claim that Operation Warp Speed contributed to this achievement. Now, some will be dubious about anything a pharma company says, but Pfizer aren't likely to make up figures when the whole world is scrutinizing their every move, it would do them irreparable harm. So I've got no reason to think that the numbers are fake, but we only have the headlines so far, which brings me to caveats. We haven't seen the full data. We need long-term follow-up. We don't know if the results will translate to all locations and all populations. So this is unlikely to be a magic bullet that for everybody and other vaccine efforts like Oxford AstraZeneca's or Moderna's, actually I think there's more than 150 different teams working on vaccines, will hopefully all work as well. We probably will need a multi-pronged approach. You know, kind of like how Ants and uh, Bugs Life came out at the same time, or, or Deep Impact and Armageddon. Olympus has fallen and White House down. Jobs and Steve Jobs. Friends with benefits and no strings attached. The Prestige and the Illusionist. You know, I think I might have got distracted here. So other caveats, we don't know how long immunity lasts. We know that it's, we don't know if it's true immunity or whether people are just getting milder versions and hence not getting tested or not feeling anything, but they are still infective. The vaccine requires quite specialist storage at minus 80 degrees, which makes local health, uh, health centers less likely to be able to help with vaccination attempts, which was the plan certainly in the UK, not to mention huge challenges for the developing world. Finally, the biggest challenge isn't going to be about the vaccine itself, it's gonna be about logistics. Pfizer say they can make 1.3 billion doses by the end of next year, but remember, you need two doses, so that's only enough for 650 million people, and we need something like four billion people worldwide to be vaccinated for herd immunity. You thought the queue outside the supermarket was bad, you haven't seen anything yet. The logistics of an operation this big are just bewildering. 
Not to mention, half of Americans have recently said that they would not receive a COVID vaccine, a direct legacy of the lies and misinformation spread on this very website and many others. Millions of children's lives have already been affected by anti-vaccine propaganda, and now the rest of us might feel its impact as well. On the flip side, I also worry that if we aren't realistic about what a vaccine can offer and think like some of the news reports that I've seen so far, that COVID is almost over, or it's going to lead people to abandon other preventive measures like social distancing or mask wearing, when in fact, it should be all the more reason to be careful because now you've got an incentive. Avoid getting 2020's least recommended experience long enough and you may never need to get COVID-19 at all. It's inevitable that politicians will also attempt to ride the coattails of this success and contribute to hyping it up so that we'll stop asking them tough questions about their pandemic response. If you want to hear me go into vaccines and science denialism in more detail, I was a guest on a panel for a London School of Economics Forum for Philosophy event a few weeks ago where we, we talked about things like whether a COVID vaccine should be mandatory. It features the quite inspirational Heidi Larson, who's director of the Vaccine Confidence Project. Uh, so I'll put the podcast link below. Until then, um, as many of us enter into flu season in, in the Northern Hemisphere, don't forget we already have another useful and very safe vaccine, the flu vaccine. So why not protect yourself and others just like I did a few weeks ago?